to what you heard there from our new king, His Majesty King Charles III. Well, what a wonderful speech it was. I've heard him speak a couple of times uh, in person, uh, once at the chief rabbi's uh, retirement party, uh, where he joked that he'd actually uh, not started the job in which uh, was his life's uh, duty to to fulfil. Um, and another on an occasion at the uh, at Buckingham Palace, where he'd invited Britain's Jewish community and spoke really superbly well. I think he's naturally a very good speaker, and he certainly proved it on that occasion. Um, and uh, it was necessary that he should do so. Um, I think, you know, all the questions that have been asked over many years about whether when the Queen uh, finally did die, he would be ready to take over um, seem to have disappeared. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, Lord Finkelstein, one of the things that I found quite powerful today was something that you yourself actually tweeted, uh, something that your own grandmother and I think yourself uh, have said often, which is, while the Queen is safe in Buckingham Palace, we are safe in Hendon Central. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, my, my grandmother was born in uh, Lvov which is now Lviv in Ukraine, but it was Lviv in Poland when she was born there. And uh, her husband, uh, my father, who when he was 10 years old, and my grandmother were all uh, expelled from their home by the Soviets. They ended up being in uh, in Siberia and Kazakhstan, uh, eventually fleeing with the uh, Polish Free Army through Russia to Iran uh, before coming to this country. And uh, the Pledge of Allegiance that they made, and also my maternal grandfather, made at the time to King George meant a great deal to them. They associated the monarchy with their stability and freedom. I know some people say, you know, um, because the British uh, government has been so powerful in empire uh, that a minority, you know, not that they wish to celebrate the, uh, to, to celebrate the life of the monarchy. I, I think on the contrary, certainly for my community, we see it, we've always seen it as a sign of stability and protection and um, very grateful for it. And picking up on the comments when he announced the new Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, uh, these words as we were reflecting, um, I know he will continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the centre ground where vital help can be given. Yes, well, look, I, I think um, just as the Queen had a very subtle view of uh, how to combine um, a, a um, as it were, conservative, uh, traditionalist view of monarchy and protocol with uh, with gentle modernisation. So I think uh, King Charles and Prince William will bring their own approach of a similar kind. And one of the things that they will stress is that the monarchy is for everybody. Uh, that it's not just for the that it may be powerful, but it's not just for the powerful. And um, uh, you know, certainly speaking as the child of someone who came to this country uh, with nothing and um, had you know had six weeks of secondary schooling at the Trans Siberian Railway School, uh, had, had nearly starved to death and came to this country with absolutely nothing. Um, they, they always saw the monarchy as the protection of them in their marginal status and eventually they made their way my father did in in in, in the world um to becoming a professor and uh, being respected in a university and that is uh, coming from the margins to be in the center uh the 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 the, uh, the promise that um the king has now made to everyone